All right, so I got early access to this game, Crusader Kings 3, and Paradox is actually gonna sponsor this video. I've been messing around this game for a while and it has a ton of depth. I'm gonna try to simplify it down for you guys though. So here's the world map. This thing is freaking massive. We're not gonna try to conquer the entire world map though. We're just gonna start down here at Rohanna. And our immediate goal is gonna be to try to conquer this entire peninsula. Before we begin the conquest of our peninsula, there's a few marriages we have to arrange. So first, we gotta get married with our main dude. And he's really good at the martial skill, which increases levy size and levy reinforcement rate. And all these troops we have on the field right now we currently have 4k troops on the field they're all considered levies but yeah so our leader has a ton of martial 19 we want our spouse to have a lot of martial as well at least that's the strategy i'm gonna go with here because this girl's martial is so high marrying this girl will actually boost our own martial by quite a bit and she also has a trait which traits in this game are kind of rare so hail increases prowess by two which is good for combat it increases damage and toughness it also gives a small boost to health and makes them more attractive the trait is also congenital so it will be passed to our offspring so when we have babies they're going to inherit a mix of our skills and they should also be hail as well so we're going to be breeding combat machines basically so yeah we're going to marry her and now it's time to marry our half brother we're going to try to get him a woman that's in a really strong family like this girl has 575 troops and if we marry these guys we'll become their allies and they'll send their troops over to help us if we want next we're going to marry off our son and he's craven so he loses prowess in battle he's not likely to die in battle which is good i guess because he's going to run first pretty much every time but yeah we're not going to try to breed him with a ultimate killing machine wife we're just gonna marry this girl for the alliance here because yeah she's got 361 troops she'll send us but now for the big one so we can marry off our half sister and this dude has 1600 troops the only thing is that he doesn't really want to marry into us like everyone else was around 40 to 50 if not like 70 for our main guy in terms of their willingness to marry but this guy's barely willing to marry he's only at two and that's because he's marrying down he's also married as well and he doesn't like it says you i'm not sure if that means our leader or the half sister that we're trying to marry him to we're also different faith thankfully though we do have promising prospects and this makes everyone much more likely to marry us and that's due to the fact that our leader actually has martial lifestyle you can have five different ones and he started out as gallant so this is actually random along with the leader's skills i think are random at the start of the game as well a bit at least because i did a couple test runs on this and the first time i was strategist second time i was overseer the third time i was gallant but yeah being that we're gallant we get this trait promising prospects we get plus 50 of opinion I guess for marriage for our main dude and then if we want to marry off our close family or our extended family there's plus 25 so that's really going to help our half sister potentially get married to that guy and we're going to find out soon if he accepts. Before we find out if our marriage proposals were accepted we're going to create a few men at arms regiments which are elite troops and we're going to make mangonels which are good siege weapons. We drop those mangonels on the field over here we're going to have them move towards this castle and we're going to move this army towards this castle as well and this army too we're going to have everyone just group up and we're all going to attack this castle immediately. And here we go. Time is now passing. It's going to take us... I think it was like 18 days to get over there and okay we already got our marriage proposal accepted between our son and this guy's daughter this one worked out as well between our main guy and this girl and okay this is the one that we really weren't sure that was gonna happen our half sister's marriage worked out as well and this guy's got the huge army and finally our brother's marriage worked out too so this girl who our main guy married she was really good at martial and she has the hail trait she's lowborn and we didn't marry her for her alliance power we just married her for her stats but with our other marriages we got alliances and we can call these guys to war now. So this guy Raja Prola now has 2k troops and we can call him to war for 150 prestige. We do have 775 of it already so it's not even going to dent our prestige that badly but yeah we're going to call him to war. We're also going to call this guy Thakur to war as well with his 450 troops and then this guy Thakur Dazaratha actually has 1151. We're going to call him to war too. And so yeah those guys will come over and help us out eventually but for now we're kind of on our own. We're going to keep pressing on towards this castle and there we go we're beginning the siege. We do have the mangles there now. Yeah, the mangonels are out and we're now bombarding this castle and we have two months left only. It's actually really quick. And that's only the max amount that it's gonna last. It actually might be over much quicker than that. With our mangonels, we did enough damage to the fort so that we can actually assault it. And doing this is gonna give us way more siege progress per day, but we're gonna take 126 casualties per day. So we're at 5K troops right now and we're gonna start assaulting it. It's only gonna take nine days though, before it was like 50 days, I think. So yeah, we're gonna assault it and we're losing, holy crap, we're losing a lot of troops though. I think it's okay though. I think we will replenish them over time, but yeah, we're down to, what the heck? We're down to 1800, 1600. 
1,400 troops. This is brutal. We're losing so many troops. We were at 5k. Now we're down to 1k. We just got destroyed. Well, we now control candy though, so that's good. Maybe it would have been better just to wait out the 59 days or whatever and not assault the castle. It said we we're going to lose, what was like 100 troops per day, but we ended up losing, it felt like more like 1,000 troops a day. And now I think we're going to have our army press on towards this other castle. We should start replenishing over time. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Like we're at 1,000 right now and we're actually getting pretty close to this castle. Hoping we're going to replenish. No, we're actually not. We're still at 1,000. And okay, this guy's actually sending over 2,900 troops. We do have an ally over here, though, that's sending over 2k, so this guy might help us out. We're actually losing troops here while we siege, too, and our wife is now pregnant. And yeah, this guy's coming over with his 2,900 troops. He's getting really close to our ally, and I'm not sure who's going to win this. To help our ally, we're going to employ a mercenary company. This one costs 600, which is a good chunk of our money. We have 1,700, but this one's got 1,700 troops, and it's really powerful. It's got a lot of these candayats and armored footmen, so we're going to hire them for three years for six. And we're now going to send them over towards our ally and we're going to try to help them out. Which I'm not sure if they're going to make it over here. Okay, our ally got away. That's good. And the enemy is coming closer. But yeah, our ally is helping us out with the siege. That's really good. Okay, yeah. We'll just join our armies up, I guess. We could assault a fort now <laughs> for 120 casualties per day, it says. I don't think it actually means 120 casualties per day. We only have 2,700 troops left, too. That's another thing. And this guy's army's coming in. So I'm not sure what to do here. Oh, never mind. We got 4,800 with our ally. I mean, we only got 51 days left. We could just let this guy run around and do whatever he wants. Like, he's going to siege this fort now. How long is it going to take? Seven months. Okay, yeah, we're just going to let him do that. And we're just going to hold out here. He keeps sieging his castle. We're not going to assault it this time. And yeah, we're down to 25 days left. 20, 18. And these guys actually want to surrender, I think. Romance declaration of love. As I push aside the sheets to lay down, I find a little scroll resting in my bolster. Someone has entered my chamber unnoticed. A chill runs down my spine as I carefully unroll the thick parchment. My winsome lion, lord of my heart, I can keep my feelings secret no longer. From this day on, I will do everything in my power to prove my loyal affections. We will see each other soon. Until then, dream of me, my love. Eternally yours, Maka. We can either abandon this foolish endeavor immediately and that will end her scheme to romance us, or we can say, you flatter me, my lady, and she'll attempt to win our hearts, but I don't know if our wife is going to be upset about that. We'll just try it. I'm pretty sure she might be mad. But yeah, two days left on the siege only and they should surrender here. There we go. We won the siege. This time we didn't take that many casualties and we're now gonna head over to attack these guys. Our allies should help too. Think anyways. Oh yeah, and this guy is just running. I'm not sure where this guy's going exactly. He's running towards our main capital, I guess. Or maybe he's gonna actually stand to fight here. That'd be really cool. Because we got our ally with us and we got 4,800 troops. Oh yeah, they're fighting. Looks like we're absolutely destroying this guy. He's got 1,600 troops left. 1,400. We got 4k, 1100 versus 4k still. They're losing way more troops than we are. He's down to 600, 400, and we're losing like 20 at a time, 200, down to 72. Yeah, he's done. Um, he's now trying to retreat, and we killed a few of them as they retreated, but yeah, he still has a bunch left, and we would like to run him down ideally. I don't know if we're going to be able to though. Like, I accidentally gave him a little bit of time to get away, so he might just be able to run. Yeah, he's definitely going to be able to get away. We're going to move on to this castle, I guess, over here, and our ally is actually taking this one down here. Our wife ended up having two babies, and these things are going to be killing machines. This little boy just got born, and he's already got one prowess and one marshal. We're going to name him Doom Guy after the series I'm doing on RimWorld, and we're going to name the girl Doom Girl. They're going to bring absolute destruction into the battlefield. Our allies were down here sieging and I'm not sure how the mechanic works exactly where if your ally sieges and they take something or I guess they're actually leaving now. They did most of the dirty work for us though. There's only 15 days left on the siege. Two days left, one day and yeah we took over the castle. They did most of the work though like I said. We're not going to send this army up here to rejoin our main army and there is a enemy army coming in here with 2k troops. They're sieging Trincomale, but there's six months left on that siege. That's going to take them quite a while and holy cow siege weapons are such a big deal. So there was like two months left or maybe it was like three months even but it jumped down to like 24 days once our siege weapons entered and yeah we could assault the fort but we're just going to siege them out and yeah we won the siege. I'm not sure exactly what to do now though. Like, these guys are getting sieged on. If we go over here with this army, I hope our allies will follow. Oh yeah, they're following. This guy's gotta run. He's freaking screwed now, I think. I mean, he's running, but... I think we're gonna be able to chase him down. Hopefully. Maybe he's running quicker than we can chase him down. Meanwhile, we have some forbidden love between our son and his aunt. Uh... 
Yeah, that's a little bit disturbing. We can either attempt to cover them up or we can imprison them. There doesn't seem to be any negatives to covering for them though, so we're gonna do that because yeah, if we imprison them, it's apparently an act of tyranny. It's really no bueno. I mean, we should probably imprison them for a few days at least to teach them that, you know, that's kind of a no-no, but um, I guess we're gonna cover up for them. Meanwhile, one of our allies is actually in battle over here. The one that only has 400 troops. Like, he engaged this army without us, which sucks. And Oh, okay, we're in there now. We have 5.5k troops. They only have 950 now, 700, 400. Okay, we're on too fast of speed. Basically, we're just destroying them, though. We still have 5.3k. They're not at 25. They are trying to retreat, though, and we're mobbing them. And they got away with, I guess, 1,300 troops, which I think are all wounded. They're retreating north. So we're going to follow them up to this castle, and we're going to try to take this castle. Our allies are actually going down here towards this one, though. Maybe we should help our allies. We're going to follow our allies with a smaller army. We sent a few catapults over here and some units. Not that many though. Our main army's heading over here to this castle and they're following this wounded army which is retreating. But yeah we got 3.5k troops over here almost and we could actually assault this castle I think if we wanted to. There's a large breach in the walls or maybe not actually. It's not letting us control if we want to breach or not and assault the fort. Oh and our ally actually is leaving. We don't have enough soldiers. We're gonna have to send some more soldiers over here. Are they really gonna just leave us? Yep they're gonna leave us. We split off 400 troops from our main army and we're gonna send them down here. I hope that's gonna be enough to take out this castle and so yeah we're sieging two castles at once the enemy did send over a army of 1400 troops and are now sieging trincomale but they got four months left and yeah we already won the siege of cot we're gonna now bring this army of 840 troops back up here and reunite it with our main army then we're gonna try to take this castle and we're probably gonna try to take these guys on afterwards what's weird over here is it says we're not even sieging this castle so i'm not sure what that's all about or, okay, we won? To the vile Thakur Vijay Bahu, may wisdom ever elude you. You are a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. And so yeah, I guess we now own this entire peninsula. Wow, that was actually really easy. And we're playing on the normal difficulty, like, which is the hardest difficulty right now. Not sure if they're going to add more later on, but yeah, I guess we won. Or, I mean, we have our own peninsula now. Question is, do we keep expanding? Like, I think ideally here, we'd probably want to build up our infrastructure. Like, we can build buildings in each of our towns like farms which increase our tax rate by 0.5 a month they do cost 150 though and they take three years to build that's quite a while i think if we were to continue this campaign and we were to march on to madurai we'd probably just want to use all our money for like mercenaries and stuff i don't think we want to build up our infrastructure because if we bought some mercenaries we could just blitz through their territory and just obliterate them i think and yeah i don't know what do you guys think are you guys liking crusader kings would you like to see another episode i feel like i've only scratched the surface of this game with this video there's a ton of mechanics that i just haven't really gone over we also have little doom guy that was born he did not get our trait though which is unfortunate it. Doom Girl did though. She's Hail and that increases her prowess. So it looks like Doom Girl is actually going to be the stronger one of the two. She does have three prowess already and she has two martial. And she's only one years old. Doom Guy only has one prowess and one martial and I guess he has one stewardship. But yeah, if you guys did like this and you want to see the Rohana Empire expanded over to Chola, I guess, drop a like on the video. And with that, I want to thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next one.